Hi, my name is Mark Miguel and I'm from the University of Pretoria. My final year project was working on a UAV catapult for the Orange project. The background of this project is that of rhino poaching. Rhino poaching is a serious problem in South Africa in which 1,028 rhinos were poached in 2017 alone. The aircraft for rhino and environmental defense, or ARENT, was envisioned to help combat rhino poaching. An unmanned aerial vehicle, or UAV, is used in a reconnaissance capacity to search for poachers. Once poachers are found, the location is sent to the game rangers on the ground, which can then move in to apprehend the poachers. My project served to address a number of problems with the ARENT UAV. The ARENT has no undercarriage of its own to maintain aerodynamic efficiency, and as such, the UAV has no way of taking off by itself under its own power. A catapult was proposed as a launch platform, but this introduces a number of aspects which also need to be taken into consideration. Aircraft experience high accelerations on catapult launches, and therefore structural limits of the UAV become a point of concern. The UAV is intended to operate in game reserves, so the catapult must be operable in bushveld terrain and remote locations. According to the specifications of the UAV, it must be launched between 15 and 20 meters per second. I considered two types of catapults as potential concepts. The first was the bungee catapult and the second was the pneumatic catapult. Bungee catapults are simple to use, easier to manufacture, however their launch characteristics are more unpredictable and they also exert high initial accelerations on the aircraft. Pneumatic catapults by contrast are more expensive and more complicated to manufacture. Legislation is also involved as the design has to comply to pressure vessel regulations. However, the result is that the accelerations are more controlled. Due to the ease of manufacture and cost effectiveness, it was decided to go with a bungee catapult. Before the design of the catapult could commence, preliminary experiments had to be carried out. The first was for wing strength. The wings had to be tested to determine their structural strength with regard to how much acceleration they could handle. The wings were supported perpendicularly to the ground and weighted bags of one kilogram each were placed evenly along the leading edge of the wings. This would simulate the force due to acceleration experienced by the wings. In total, 46 kilograms were placed on the wings and this was equivalent to a 10 G acceleration. This was provided that the acceleration force is applied through the structural spine of the UAV and not through the wings. The next set of experiments was that to find the properties of the bungees. The bungees were attached to a fixed point on the ceiling and then weights were suspended from the free end at the bottom. Weights were added in increments of one kilogram and the elongation of the bungee was measured with each increment. The weight versus of elongation could then be plotted. A curve fit was used to obtain the force in the bungee as a function of percentage elongation. During the experiments, it was noticed that the bungees would carry on elongating over time at a given weight. It was then decided to do two experiments. One for loading the bungees, as described in the previous slide, and one for unloading the bungees, from a maximum of 15 kilograms in decrements of 1 kilogram. This was done to account for the extra elongation. This behavior suggests that the force in the bungees decreases over time at a given elongation. It is also clear from the data that the force in the bungees is highly nonlinear and Hooke's law cannot be used to describe the behavior. A curve fit was then used to obtain an equation to obtain the force at a percentage elongation. A mathematical model was then developed to describe the acceleration and velocity of the UAV over the rail. Friction was assumed to be negligible. The catapult's length was then divided into discrete sections, each being 10 mm in length. The net force acting on the UAV, as well as its mass, are known, and this can be used to calculate the acceleration over each interval. The acceleration is assumed to be constant over the discrete interval, which means that the equations of motion can be used to solve for the velocity over that small step. The length of catapult, the bungee elongation, as well as the number of bungees can be entered as parameters into the model. By changing these iteratively, 
One can arrive at the value of these parameters for which the values for the velocity and acceleration will meet the specifications. Using the mathematical model, the velocity and acceleration profiles of the UAV along the length of the catapult can now be plotted. The blue curve represents the velocity profile and the grey curve represents the acceleration profile. With a catapult length of 4.5 meters, a bungee elongation of 125% using a 4 meter free length, and 7 bungees, the initial acceleration of the UAV is 9.6 g's and the launch velocity is 23.42 meters per second. The initial acceleration is less than the 10 g limit as specified by the wing tests and the launch velocity is slightly higher than the 20 meter per second specification but this is not critical. With the essential parameters of the catapult now known, the final design could commence. This CAD model shows the final design of the catapult. It is important to note that this catapult is 6 meters in length. The cradle and the UAV only travel 4.5 meters along its length. The extra 1.5 meters are taken up by the runoff in the front of the catapult which serves to arrest the cradle after the UAV is launched and the trigger and winch mechanism at the rear end of the catapult. With the final design of the catapult complete, it was then manufactured. Notice the steel test slug resting on the cradle at the rear end of the catapult. This test slug was used instead of the actual UAV in the performance test of the catapult. Also notice the black and yellow stripes painted on the side of the catapult. These stripes are each 100 mm in length. These serve as a reference when using the high-speed camera footage during the tests. The testing of the catapult was done using a dummy weight or slug instead of the UAV itself. The first test was performed using only three bungees. Subsequent launches were to use five and then seven bungees. This was done as a point of safety so that potential problems could be spotted before loading the catapult with the force of all seven bungees at once. The launch was then recorded with video at 240 frames per second. The motion of the cradle could then be analyzed frame by frame. By knowing that 0.042 seconds are elapsed per frame, and that the length of the stripes painted on the side are each 100 millimeters in length, the distance traveled by the UAV over a certain number of frames can then be used to calculate the velocity and acceleration of the UAV. The rear leg attachments were bent after the first launch and further launching was then called off for safety purposes. This slow motion video shows the launch of the test slug using three bungees. Notice how the rear legs bend anywhere between 15 and 20 degrees, which is why testing was called off. The slug however is launched well. Also notice how there is a lot of flexing of the rail itself. The model was adapted to use the new parameters of the launch, namely three bungees instead of the seven. The experimental results were then compared to the predicted values from the mathematical model. A 25% error for initial acceleration and 24.8% error for launch velocity are observed. This discrepancy in the results is due to friction as well as the flexing of the catapult which represents an energy loss due to an imperfect load transfer from the bungees to the cradle. The losses in the catapult rail were estimated and incorporated into the mathematical model in an effort to correct it. The losses were estimated by taking the difference between the predicted accelerations from the original model and the actual accelerations obtained experimentally. A 0% error for accelerations was observed. This is due to the error being estimated directly from the acceleration. A 3.6% error for velocity was obtained. This is a small error, but it shows that the losses in the catapult are nonlinear. However, the losses are also small enough to show that the corrected model has a better prediction of the UAV's velocity and acceleration over the length of the catapult. The new proposed mathematical model which incorporates the estimated losses and using the parameters for which the catapult was designed 
now predicts an initial acceleration of 8.09 g's and a final launch velocity of 20.42 meters per second. This indicates that there will be a favorable launch. In conclusion, the original mathematical model was found to be inaccurate. There was a naive assumption that no friction was involved, but there is also an unexpected energy loss due to the rail flexing. The updated mathematical model predicts favorable launching conditions, with a peak acceleration of under 10 g's and a launch velocity of just over 20 meters per second. My recommendations for the continuation of this project is that firstly, the rear leg attachment brackets need to be redesigned so that a safe launch can be executed. Next, further testing with a full number of bungees must be done to verify the new mathematical model. The losses in the rail can also be quantified to develop an even more mathematical model than I have provided. Also, the bungees themselves can be tested for endurance to see how their properties change over successive launches as well as its launches in different weather conditions. Finally, I would like to thank Dr. Lilani Smith, my supervisor, for her help and guidance throughout this project. I would also like to thank Adam Rosman and his team from Aerial Monitoring Solutions for their invaluable assistance and advice, without which this project would not have been possible. Thank you.